Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, what we're doing today is a video that's been voted in by our Patreon members. It's a favorite topic of mine. It's the princes in the tower, the medieval mystery of those two boys. Were they murdered? Did they escape? For centuries, people have pondered on this very subject. So we're gonna have a little look at some of the things surrounding the princes in the tower and some of the theories as to what happened to them. Now, remember, before I actually go into this, I am totally impartial. I am not on one side or the other. So stick around, let's have some fun. So here we are setting the scene for the medieval mystery, the murder disappearance of the princes in the tower. Now we've got to introduce you to some of the characters, but before we do, remember these were real people and those boys were real. If they were murdered, they would have suffered. But let's have a look at who's involved. First of all, we got the king, Edward IV. He's married to Elizabeth Woodville. They have two sons, Edward and Richard. Edward should become Edward V and Richard should become the Duke of York. One of the sisters is Elizabeth, who will become Elizabeth of York. This is fine, until husband, through gluttony they reckon, dies. 1483, he's dead. That leaves Elizabeth with her children, but of course, Edward should be the king. But he's too young, 12 years of age. He can be crowned as king, but he needs somebody to guide him. Let's move Elizabeth just off stage a little bit. And on comes the good uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. This is all wonderful. He can guide and protect his nephews, Edward and Richard. Except there's a problem here. Before Edward can be crowned, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, discovers that his brother was in fact married before. This makes him a bigamist. This means that his marriage is void and his children are illegitimate and therefore cannot rule. And so Richard becomes Richard III. So the first theory, and of course it's the most popular theory, it is that Richard III, King of England, murdered his nephews and wards, Edward V and Richard Duke of York. This is made famous by the Tudor play, William Shakespeare's Richard III. It turns Richard III into some kind of a monster uncle but I think it's more Tudor propaganda. But there is an account written at the time, and this is from uh, Dominic Mancini, an Italian friar who was uh, in London at the time. And this is, this is actually what he wrote. All the attendants who had waited on the king, that's Edward V, were debarred access to him. He and his brother were withdrawn into the inner apartments of the tower proper. This is prison. Yeah. And day by day, they began to be seen more rarely behind the bars and windows till at length they ceased to appear altogether. And he goes on. Already there is a suspicion that he, Edward V, had been done away with. Whether he was done away with and by what manner of death, so far I have not yet discovered. So he leaves England uh, July 1483. Yeah, just remember that. And then he starts to tell this story. And the rumours grow from this story about, you know, how Richard III has murdered his nephews. The theory grows. And yet there were never any accusations levelled at Richard III. Nobody ever pointed the finger. And there's another little twist here. Later on in the summer, so I've read, the princes in the tower were seen playing on the lawn. Theory two. Henry Stafford, Duke of Buckingham. He, he figures, did he kill the princes in the tower? Where are they? Let's put them there, bless them. If he did, 
Did he do it for himself because he did have a claim to the throne? Or did he do it on behalf of uh, Richard III, who then had him executed in November of 1483, but there again he had led a bit of a the Buckingham revolt? Or did he do it for somebody completely different? Did he do it for Margaret Beaufort, who was the mother of Henry Tudor, paving the way for them to come to the throne? So... It's a little bit interesting, isn't it, that this particular guy could have done it. Was he executed to keep him quiet? Did he do it for Richard III or did he do it for himself? Or did he do it to pave the way for the Tudors? We'll never really know, will we? This is the least likely candidate, apparently. So the next one is the most recent theory, and it comes from Tim Thornton. Uh, and what he's investigated, and, and it really is quite something. It lays the blame, Richard III, right? So there he is. But the evidence comes from Thomas More, the Tudor, the man close to Henry VIII. Now, this has been dismissed in the past because Tudor propaganda, uh, the way that uh, Richard III was belittled, by Thomas More and then, of course, Shakespeare. However, this gets more involved. The investigation really does take on quite something of a, of a police role. So let's put these two characters, Richard III and Thomas More, to the back. Let's bring in Sir James Tyrrell, who actually survives and is tortured. And under torture, he confesses to being part of the murder of the princes in the tower. His accomplices, John Dighton and Miles Forrest. There they are. Smothered the princes, then their bodies were buried, the bottom of the stairs, then on the orders of Richard were dug up and buried elsewhere. Which is interesting because of the two skeletal remains that were found at the foot of the stairs. Now, Tyrrell, is executed. These guys, the murderers, they pass away. However, apparently, the sons of Miles Forrest are interviewed by Thomas More, and they give the story, so I understand, of the murder of the princes in the tower, how Tyrrell, with his accomplices, did indeed smother them with a pillow, bury them, dig them up, and rebury them somewhere else, all on the orders of Richard III. This is really compelling, and it's quite important because you're starting to get some evidence here written down. However, as a retired police officer, I'm going to put my oar in here, my finger in the spoke, shall we say. Can you trust the confession of a man who's been tortured? Because I know for sure, a person under duress, especially under pain, they might just tell you the story you want to hear. But hey, Thomas More, honourable man, telling the truth? Tyrrell telling the truth? Well, that's for you to decide. Me, I am totally impartial to this. Theory number four. Lady Margaret Beaufort again, she makes an appearance. Did she give the order for the princes to be murdered? Henry Stafford, Duke of Buckingham. Did she tell him, pay him, urge him to do it? Paving the way for her son, Henry Tudor, later to become Henry VII. Was she the one? She didn't have access, actually, to the tower itself or the, the princes in the tower. But later on, if they'd have been moved or if they escaped and she knew where they were, could she have given the order? Could she have got to Henry Stafford, Duke of Buckingham, got him to do it? She is a candidate. Hmm. Or is she? So another theory then. Henry VII did it. Well, quite possibly, if you take after the victory at the Battle of Bosworth, Richard III is dead, 
Anybody who stands in the way of Henry is put to the axe. He is determined that he will take the throne and it will be secure for he and his descendants. And don't forget that Henry was married to Elizabeth of York, the sister of the princes in the tower. But there's a little bit more to this. Uh, why didn't Henry point the finger at Richard III? Why didn't he rubbish him some more? Well, there's one theory was that England was divided. We still had Yorkist Lancastrian. They had suffered so much after the, or during and after the War of the Roses. The last thing he needed was to create a deeper division because marrying one of the daughters of his enemy, well, his niece, Richard III's niece, he's, it's kind of a healing process. Or was it a mass to the fact that Henry the Henry the Seventh, I know he said fourth, Henry the Seventh did do away with the princes in the tower later on, knew where they were, just to make sure he clears the way for him to be king and secure the dynasty, the dynasty of the Tudors. So the final theory, the princes in the tower survived. They escaped. Gaped. Now there were pretenders to this. We've got this chap here, Perkin Warbeck. He proclaimed that he was Richard Duke of York, which would mean that uh, Edward V apparently had died of natural causes. But if you get rid of this one and presume that it was Richard of York who died of natural causes, that leaves you with Edward V. And down in Coldridge in Devon, in St Matthew's Church, there is possibly evidence that he may have survived. You've got, uh, I've got his name there, John Dyke, who has done some research into this, apparently four years worth, which I think is fantastic. You see inside St. Matthew's Church there, there are the Yorkist symbols all over the church, the sun in splendor, the, the uh, white rose of York. And also there is an image of a young man in ermine, which is said to be Edward V. There is also the tomb there of John Evans. And on the tomb, it has Evas. Evas, you break that down. E-V, Edward V. A-S, as, in Latin, in sanctuary. Edward V, in sanctuary. And to really twist this a little bit more, that church is on the land of the prince's half-brother, Thomas Gray. Just a theory now, could it be that their mother, Elizabeth Woodville, made a deal with Richard III to take her sons, keep them away, and then their half-brother, Thomas Gray, could be brought out from exile, being no threat whatsoever to Richard III. This, to me, is fascinating. Did Richard have him killed? Was it some other duke? Was it the Tudors? Well, for me, I am completely non-biased in this, and I'm gonna leave it to you to try and figure it out for yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed that film. If you did, thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And let us know your views in the comments section, or you could even join our poll in the community section. And I've got uh, a shout out here for some of our Patreon members, if you don't mind, this is important for us. Uh, thanks again, guys. Ian Tucker, Nicholas Redfern, and Ian Kirvin. We really appreciate your support, guys. So for now, thank you very much. See you soon.